everybody, it is Cinnamon Cooney, your art Sherpa, and in just around an hour, I'm going to show you how to do this fabulous abstract modern floral devotion. So all you've got to do is grab your paint, grab your brushes and your canvas, and come back and meet me at this easel right now. Come on, let's go. Hey, welcome to the studio. If you're a returning hardest, how are you guys doing this week? I know you have been being creative. I know you have been painting. I know you have been making. I'm super excited. I've been loving seeing everything you guys are doing on the Facebook page. Thank you so much for posting and sharing. If you're brand new to the channel, if you're brand new to painting, this is your place. This is the first step in a painting journey. How it works is I am going to guide you through this entire painting step by step. It's fully guided. It's every brush stroke. You want to hear what I have to say? You can hear everything I have to say. If you feel like you got it, you can fast forward me. I don't shorten the film, you shorten the film. Today we're going to paint this lovely painting, Devotion, which is a fabulous abstract modern floral. I'm really excited about teaching you this one because I think you guys are going to get some amazing paintings out of it. <gasps> Materials list. What would you need to paint the painting? Well, I'm painting on a 16 by 20 pre-gesso canvas. It comes from one of those economy multi-packs that you buy at the craft stores. So that you can get that. You may find those sometimes that they can be difficult to paint on because there's an issue with gesso coatings. You can always get another coat of gesso and put it on there if you find that you bought a pack of canvas and it's not painting right. But mostly these work just perfectly right out of the plastic, ready to paint. That's mostly what it is. But if you ever have trouble, you can get yourself some gesso. Paint! We need some of it. Today's paint colors are uh, cadmium yellow medium hue, cadmium yellow red hue, phthalo or polyethylene blue, green shade, dioxinine purple, yellow ochre, sometimes called yellow oxide, burnt sienna, and titanium white. You'll need water, and you're going to need an assortment of acrylic brushes. When I talk about brushes, I'm going to tell you a brush size, the width of the bristles in the ferrule, not the number that's on the brush. So like, I might be doing the background, and in this, and it's an Ebony Splendor by Creative Mark, which is, I love those brushes. It's a number 18, but from brush company to brush company, there isn't a standardization of size. So a number 18 in one company won't be the same size as a number 18 in another. So I might look at this and say, this is about an inch, three quarters of an inch wide. So you can sit there and go, oh, I need a filbert, which is the rounded brush, about an inch to three quarters of an inch wide. And I'm golden. It's nice to have a rag or paper towel to wipe excess paint off on. That's a very important thing that we actually do during this painting class. All right, we're painting with acrylic paint. And today, I'm mostly painting with a Liquitex heavy body. But hey, you know what? If it's on sale, I get uh, Golden Artist Colors or I'll have Matisse Derivat. You know, what I really try to do is find professional acrylic paints that are within my budget. So just buy the best paint that your budget will allow from a big name brand company because off-brand companies sometimes give us really crazy strange paint. The other thing I always like to have is my delicious beverage. Do you love my little owl cup today? And then the fabulous new addition to the studio is the mini me. Do you love her? I love her. She's so pretty. All right. Let's just get started. First things first, chalk, pencil, just some way to mark the canvas. I like chalk because it interacts well with the paint. New tip that I've run into for some of the other YouTube content creators, a lot of them are using watercolor pencils. And I think that's a very good idea. My mom's been doing that and she's been liking it. But I've got this nice blue chalk today. Your kid's chalk, by the way. Their sidewalk chalk will work just fine on this. And I need to make a circle here in the lower left of my canvas, and this little circle, which I kind of pre-sketched in, is about nine and a half inches wide to nine and a half inches tall. So actually, I got in a pretty good circle, okay? It is over just past, if it's nine and a half, it's just a little bit past the halfway mark of this canvas, okay? Because eight inches on a 16 by 20 would be the half inch mark. So what I want to do is I want to make a little mark over here at about nine and a half inches wide. 
and a little mark up top at about nine and a half inches wide. Now here's a little trick. You could put, a, if, if circles, it's just like, I just don't really draw circles. I get these weird other egg-like shapes, like I cracked the egg and poured it out and it just doesn't work for me. Guess what? Take a plate, your paper plate, a dish plate, a pot lid, anything that's round, place it on the canvas and it will help you guide through. Now on this, if you'll notice right here, I've sketched off here and I've sketched off here. This is a very important thing for the hearts that are coming back and even if you're really new, here's a very important thing. This is called being over in the thirds. A lot of times in design we'll look for focal points in the thirds and you divide a canvas up into thirds and you create focal points in those spots to create drama. Another thing that creates drama is going off the picture plane. Sometimes when we want to do a floral for ourselves, the inclination is to put the vase right in the center, right here, and center everything, which makes for a very calm and almost stagnant painting sometimes. Now, if it's used correctly, it can be very powerful, but if you want that fabulous floral drama, you've got to have a little bit of your flower pot coming off. The other little line that I'm going to just sketch in is halfway on my, if this is the halfway point for my circle, I'm going to make like a little smile. This is how I'm going to create my lips for my perspective on the water. And I'm going to pop up here a mirror of that. Okay, now your brain can give you some grief here if you're new to art, because your left brain and your right brain will get into a little bit of a fight. They battle sometimes. It happens. So what you're looking for is a smile and a frown. Make sure lips, okay? Once that's in, I know where this is going to be. Guess what I get to do? I get to get my filbert number 20. I guess this one is, a, and it is an inch wide, right? Create a mark. I'm gonna get my brush wet and I'm gonna get this is going to be crazy, a scotch, a smidge of dioxane purple, and I'm going to bring it over to my yellow ochre. These colors are contrast, which means they're in opposite directions from each other on the color wheel. And when you mix them together in small amounts, you gray out the vibrancy of the color and create these beautiful custom colors. Now I'm going to come over to the white and I'm going to get some white because I'm trying to make this nice background here. And I'm going to paint in my whole canvas with this nice, soft, neutral color. It's beautiful. It's actually in right now as a color. But it also gives me a very neutral background that I can put all these crazy colors in front of. Now, one of the things that I know as a painter is I don't have to make Home Depot colors. Mm -mm. Not required. I can have some different tones and shades in this. So you can too, and I want you to just be relaxed about that. That's an area where a new painter might get really stressed out. And if you're new, your big job right now, you guys who've been here for a while know what it is, your big job is just to cover the white of the canvas. And believe it or not, if you're really new, that can be very stressful. Don't think you're alone if you're having trouble with that. Okay, I'm getting some white and I'm mixing this in. I'm gonna come right up here, okay? Or maybe I'm gonna come really right here. So if I don't have enough paint on my brush, right, when I'm painting, a lot of the white will show through. But when I have enough water, and enough paint, all of the white disappears. And that's just what we want. Another thing that can give you grief in covering the canvas is again, I mentioned those coatings. If for some reason there was an issue with that package of canvases coating and you find like you are just working to death to cover the canvas, that package of canvases that you purchased may need a coat of gesso before painting. It never hurts anything. It should not be necessary. These are supposed to be pre-gessoed. That should be something that you're only having to worry about in a much finer art practice. But you know, 
it is what it is right now, so we just adapt to the circumstances that we're in. So I've got a slightly lighter tone here. I'm going to come right around this right here. All right, come right around. Now, as I'm getting down here, I'm going to want to get darker values. So I'm going to take a little more purple and a little more yellow, add a little less white to it. I'm just going to have a darker value. Interesting thing we have going on in the Heart Party Studio today is we have quite a storm going. It's raining, it's pouring right outside the studio today. Oh mind. I have a plan for if the power goes out, but let's all intend the power doesn't go out. Let's all wish for that. I hope you guys are having a wonderful time enjoying your art journey. I hope that if you're coming to art for healing, that you're getting the healing you need out of that art. If you were thinking, like if you're new here and you're thinking, gosh, I'm wondering if art will make me feel better. Mm -hmm. It does. It absolutely helps you feel better cannot change the circumstances that are going on in your lives, but it can help you get a set of tools to deal with them. And I'm going to get maybe a little more purple, a little more gold down here. I'm going to work that in a little more. Now, see that right there? Just working sort of a random, random thing. Sometimes when you're new, what you want to do is like very consistent patterns but because your brain is set up to recognize patterns that's all it'll see and that will mess up your painting so you're going to want to learn to break up your patterns I might even grab a little of this burnt sienna right now and take it over to my purple it's sort of fun while this is all sort of wet notice I didn't even rinse out my brush you'll see artists do that a lot it's because we already have some color that we know we're going to need on the brush and that works out really well for us. Now I'm going to paint a little color up top. Okay, and I want it to be slightly different, but yet the same to the background. So I'm going to make it quite light. And I'm not going to take out my blue line entirely, okay? I'm going to leave some of it in just so I know where this is. I'm just, because I know I'm going to come back with a lot of blue, but I want some color right here from the background. Alright, just kind of find that out. Woohoo, having fun. And I'll come in and I'll do this darker color at the bottom. Working that out. Just working out the shapes. Keeping that shape though. I don't want to lose my sketch. I don't want to lose my sketch. I'm going to get some just yellow. I'm just working this in here, okay? Going in an upward stroke right now. Coming along the line of my water where my reflection is going to be. So I got asked a question recently, which I did answer on the Facebook page. I try to put up little videos on occasion on the Facebook page to answer questions. Plus I really try to answer your questions or comment on your posts when you share artwork. I always try to do that. Um, about painting like a master. Should we sketch it in and then paint in all the little details as we see them? Should we put in an acrylic color ground, which is a field of color, and then paint over that? Or should we do what I'm doing right now, which is basically an underpainting, it's sort of blocking in the shape and feeling of a painting with paint, and then painting up layers on top of that? And here's my answer. All of these techniques that I talked about were actually developed by master painters through the ages to address the challenges they had with their media, and their light and their circumstances. So every one of these fabulous techniques that we like to use so much here in the studio is actually based in some fabulous brave artist who actually trucked out with their easel on their back 
and made paint by hand and made brushes by hand and dealt with these issues way before us. So when you're in a museum, I want you to imagine being that painter and making that paint or having 20 minutes of light because you don't have a camera. You have 20 minutes of light and every day is different than every other day trying to capture a moment. So many of these techniques we have are based in those fabulous, I'm gonna make a, I'm gonna make sure I paint my corner here. All right, keeping my, in shape, in shapes. All right. Now I've got a whole different color right here. And that's just so you want to make sure you've got a whole different color to paint the surface where my surface reflection is in. It's a little more purple and white. And hey, if you've got to be like really, really purple and white, that's okay. Whatever it takes for you to get these little fields of paint, we're just covering canvas at this stage. Much like somebody would be in an old studio, practically starving to death, hoping for patrons, <laughs> would have been doing. It's kind of interesting when you think about the experience artists had. I'm going to take this little purple and I'm going to kind of sketch in this little halo so I know where it is. It's fun to do. You can put on music if you need to in your studio. Whatever you need to to be enjoying your studio. So I've got that all sketched in, right? And I don't want to lose my shapes. But now you can kind of see that all those things, all those little basic shapes are sketched in. Put my brush in the water. And the next thing we like to do is, because I don't want to wait for things to dry, is the hair dryer. And you don't want to wait for things to dry. It's absolutely acceptable to use the hair dryer. Make sure you keep it about six inches back and move it around the canvas. And it should only take a few minutes and you'll know that your paint is dry when it stops being shiny and starts looking kind of flat. A nice little square. Ah, here we go. So I have a little half inch bright. Might be a little, I think it's a half inch. Might be under a half inch. This is a Pro Stroke by Creative Mark. I just like the Creative Mark brushes because for the quality of the paint, they're very economically priced. They run a lot of sales on Jerry's Art Rama. And you can get these brushes a lot of places. But basically, it's just a brush for acrylic painting. Most of my bristles are synthetic, except um, when I want like kind of a stiffer bristle or if I'm going to blow out a brush for one of those creative techniques that I have. Next thing we're going to do, we're going to get our brush wet. We're going to come over to our blue. We're going to pull out a little blue. Notice how when I pull it out, how I pull it out. I come from these little edges. I pull it out and I'm going to get a little yellow. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to make kind of a bluish green. I'm going to tint that blue but make a bluish green. I might grab a scotch of white just to bring out that turquoise. And I'm going to sketch in my glass. I'm not going to sketch in the very top, but if you did, don't worry about it. Right? I'm going to leave that sort of open. I don't need to know about that. And I'll be coming in and defining this up as I go. Get a little water, get a little more paint. So much your painting is about knowing when to get water and a little bit more paint. So much of painting is about that. And come down here, make sure I catch my corner, and I'm going to really define the top of my water, my water ellipse. Okay? Often abstract paintings seem really simple when actually they're quite complex and there's a lot going on. Sometimes you have to be quite good to simplify something. Right? Like in here, I create paintings, I design paintings for you. And how I do, do that is I go like, what's trending? What are you guys really excited about right now? What colors are exciting to you right now? What's happening in art that's exciting to you right now? And then I work very hard to create very original, original, original pieces. I don't take other artists' artwork. I create original pieces. I may be absolutely on trend for a style of painting or a way that we're talking about art, but I won't ever just copy somebody else's art. Um, and I come here and I create these lessons and I break down sometimes very complicated thoughts for you. Now, it doesn't really matter, like my line over thickened here. And I just want you to know that I'm relaxed about that because it doesn't really matter for what I'm doing. Now I'm gonna come down and I'm gonna make another little smile at the top much of that's going to be painted out, which is why I was like, just don't worry if like somehow you you lost your 
You lost your top. Don't worry about it. So that's how I do that. And this is not how I paint for myself when I'm painting. I have a, I have a lot of art skills and I do a lot of different things with my painting. Um, but when I'm painting with you guys, I'm trying to teach you to paint like you. Right? I'm trying to give you a bunch of different art skills so you can paint like you. And I'll teach you to paint like me. I paint like me. It's pretty cool. <laughs> and I love what I do. But I want you to have as many art skills as possible so that eventually the goal being you can take classes with other art instructors. You can continue on painting with us. My ultimate dream goal would be that you could go on vacation or you could go someplace and see something that really spoke to you creatively and figure out how to get it on campus. That's my ultimate goal for you. And I'm going to get this wet. I'm going to come over here. And again, I'm going to bring a little yellow over and I'm going to make a dark green, a very, very, very dark green. And one crazy thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a scotch a small amount. Sometimes if you think of the paint when I say scotch as like say chili peppers or something, it helps get the amounts that I'm talking about down easier. So I've created this dark green and, and you're about to see why it just didn't really matter what I did at the top of the painting. And I'm going to very loosely and expressively, it's sometimes nice when doing this, I like to have uh, music on in the studio, but it's really hard to get the music licenses for, you know, the music I would be listening to that I'd be just like jamming down and painting and relaxing to. Very challenging. I'm coming up. I've got kind of a little blob shape happening here. And I'm sort of filling this in. And then the next thing that I'm going to do, I will be changing brushes in a second. And there'll be a reason why I'm changing brushes. I'm going to go back to that half inch in just a second. I just want to make sure that this is a deep. I'm actually going to take this all the way around the side of this vase. I've got some flowers next to me to even be inspirational. And bring this up, oh, about a hand's worth. Not all the way to the top. I just want to have this in there where this is in the background. This is also kind of part of my underpainting. I'm talking about some stuff here and I want to have it in and under. I'm going to get some brown. Bring that in here. Create some tonal depth. Have fun with this. Don't be afraid. When you're very new to painting, painting can be very scary because there's a feeling of pass-fail going on. That is not true. This is a safe place. To share your art, this is a safe place to have a very first time ever painting. I know what a very first time ever painting looks like, and I know when you've done a good job on that. And honestly, the goal is to finish. The goal is to complete the painting. I get perfection. I think perfection is wonderful, but it's very important just to get through the whole process because that's where the growth comes from. Get your brush wet. We're going to come over with our cadmium yellow medium. And remember, you can get these in Hue, or one place that you can save on your palette is you can get Cadmium Yellow Hue and Cadmium Red Hue. That will save you a lot of money on your studio if you're not selling your artwork yet. It's not as important to have like a true CAD in a painting. I paint with it because I grew up with it. I'm going to get a little of my brown over here. Make this nice dark color. And I'm going to do some fun things. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make an arcing line. It's going to arc. It's going to arc. Notice how I'm holding my brush just as a little point. Don't be holding your brushes back here, guys. Be sure and holding your brushes relaxed in your hand in a comfortable position. I like to make sure some of my fingers are touching the ferrule. I'm going to paint up and down. The tip of my brush is going to go along the canvas and I'm going to make a nice arc. My pressure will be harder here and lighter here. I'm going to do it again. Isn't this fun? There we go. I might come and get some brown. I'm going to make another little line here. This one's going to be light and sort of skip along. Just making some lines. I'm just looking for some spaces. This is my floral arrangement. 
I can go to the flower shop. Look, I made a very interesting line. I went up, I dipped down, and I went over. Because in nature, things tend to not be perfect. They tend to sort of have their own little flow and jam. And so I want to make sure that I have that there. Another one that I'm going to do, and this is a fun one, is I'm going to come down right across my vase. Come down, 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 down. And I've also noticed that I almost did a light S. These little curves, they're wonderful things to try for. It's not where the painting is made or broken at, but when you paint it for a long time, you'll start to naturally flow into them. And it's a goal. It's just something to grow into and have a goal about. Now I'm going to make some little leaves and I'm going to press hard and lighten up to decide where my shape is. And I'm going to make a shape that's like very long. It's going to be wider at the base and narrow at the tip. And I'm going to come along and I'm going to make a few of these shapes. I'm going to make them on both sides. This is a very interesting little leaf plant. Another thing that I'm very comfortable doing that you might not be very comfortable doing yet as a new artist is notice I have it attached the leaves to the stem. Mm, whatever is that about? Oh, that's about something really exciting and fun. Yes, so there's a thing in art we like to call it implied lines. It's the implications of art. So we paint what we see, but we also paint a moment in time. We paint what we feel. And I have a feeling about this particular little branch and how it was to me maybe in the light. And by not connecting the leaves, your brain does the finishing work for you. And it allows you to access, it allows the viewer to access all kinds of important things in the painting. And an artist might use that tool to tell some really fabulous stories. So that's something to experiment with. Are you comfortable not connecting the leaves yet? Are you comfortable? I did a nice little curve here. And again, a lot of this is I'm pressing hard and then I'm lightening up and I'm working out my shape. Isn't that lovely? And you just like, and for those of you that successfully enjoy the disconnection of the leaves, that's a big step. Give yourself a little pat on the back and be like, I'm doing so good today. I'm doing all right. I'm doing so good today. Everything's all right. Look at that. That's a beautiful shape, isn't it? Oh, that's going to impress people. People are going to be like, oh. How did you do that? And you're like, oh, I'm just, I'm just good like that. It's, it's not really that big a deal. Now I want you to load up some more of this dark green. We're gonna come up to this funny little thing that we made here, and we're gonna come and we're gonna do little dabs. See how I've got that? This is, you will see sometimes you'll see something like a Donna Dewberry looking stroke. Well, guess what? All the fine artists on the planet can go mm -mm, to Donna Dewberry, but the fact is, strokes are brush strokes. She's just learned to capitalize on those to create a painting skill that people can adopt so they can paint in their lives. I say hoo ha to the artists that don't just embrace all that, right? I mean, we got to know where we come from. If you can't recognize that, then I don't know what you're doing. I really don't. We have to embrace each other in art and not be so crazy and critical. I think that's like one of the things that artists need to learn to do is just be like, that's all good. It accomplishes the goal. All art does not need to be the same for everybody. Look at those. I just dotted those out. So that is really, and I'm going to come up close in case you're having trouble sort of seeing that. I'm going to see, hopefully this camera will. Maybe it'll be this camera. <laughs> See? Not hard. Just press down, flick. Press down, flick. If you ever run into somebody who's in art and they're critical of your art, a lot of times the way that they're critical, if they're silly enough to be critical, 
because everybody's been everywhere in an art journey and we all know it maybe some of us are acting crazy like we weren't but everybody has been um, a lot of times what they're critical about is very telling about what they're struggling with so if they're like oh well that looks like an illustration I might go mm, they're having a little trouble with their drawing skills so I want you to recognize if anyone is ever not supportive it is about them and has nothing to do with you or your painting. I just want you to look at them like a crazy person and just be like, okay, okay, however you feel. You don't need to get in it with them. You just, they're on their own journey and they're having a meltdown and it just doesn't have anything to do with you. Because really accomplished artists tend not to be so wound up. Look at that beautifully. Wow. Like it. I like it. I like it. I truly, truly like it. Now I'm going to come up almost to the bend right here. And I'm going to do something really crazy. I'm going to continue that sort of brush stroke, but without the stem. Uh uh. No. Really? Yes. And that's what we're going to do. We are going to paint things where we don't. Look at that, I put one right there between them, looking for holes. You know, I am always looking to break up the pattern. Be brave, have fun. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put one just right out here. Just right out here, watch me. Dab, dab, dab. Just enjoying myself. Okay. This is some sort of little twiggly bit. You know how the florists like to put in. I'm gonna put one coming I think I need some balance going this direction. Okay. So I'm going to put one of these here. Now we've, we talked about sometimes it's exciting if they go off the canvas, so I'm going to take one off the canvas and I'm going to put another right here for balance. So I put those in and I'm pretty happy about that. Now I'm going to come in with this dark green. The other thing, the other place I need this dark, dark green is the stems coming down. This would be a place you might get really kind of concerned or wrapped up when you're looking at your floral arrangement. But actually, I'm just looking at a shape and a feeling. So I'm going to come from the center and I'll do, I'm not going to probably do a straight vertical because whenever I do a very perpendicular, horizontal, or strongly perfectly diagonal line, I create a visual weight. And I don't ever want to put visual weight where I don't mean to have visual weight. So I'm going to avoid a straight up and down vertical, but I might come off vertical just a touch. See that? Now I'll put my blue line back in in a second. I'm going to paint my blue line back in in a second. I just want to get these in. Okay. All right, just get these in. We'll come over here. Just painting the feeling of the stem. Not even worry about. It. I might get some more yellow on this one. Change up the color a little bit. Yeah, one right next to it. If you need more water, get it. Look for what you need and get it. What's missing? The other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that these are not all the same length. That would be an area that I could create some visual issue with what I'm doing. And I want to make sure these are all the same length. Now, I'm thinking I want a stem to go behind this. So I'm going to have to do something kind of careful here. I'm going to come here. I'm going to stop at my leaf. And then I'm going to continue the line on. Now as I paint this, all right, here, let's get some purple. You went, wait, what, purple? All of a sudden, yeah, let's get some purple in here because we're trying to get some stem value. Get some stem value in here. Come along right next to it. 
almost next to it enough where I thicken that line visually, but then I open it up with another stem. And notice how I'm breaking up these shapes. Like how important is the stem space? Very important, guys. Short one there. I'm gonna come back in and grab some yellow. I'm gonna wipe off my brush a little bit, but not wash the paint off. I'm gonna grab some purple. Now it seems whack, but that's what I'm doing. That's also a very short stem. Now if you need to add a second coat of paint sometimes, like the tooth of the canvas will fight you. You know, I recognize there are things that will fight us. Just work around it. I'm gonna come here. All right, I pulled some great stems. I varied the length of them, so that gives me some visual stuff. I can pull this up into here a little bit if I want to. It's not gonna be important, there's gonna be a lot of layering. And now I'm gonna rinse out my brush. Rinse it out. Now you're gonna do something very, very interesting. You're gonna come in, you're gonna get a little bit of yellow ochre, just a touch of this color over here you have going, just a touch just to tint it off of its yellow, but it's still gonna to be to the yellow. And we're gonna make some weighted bigger leaves. So those are like long football shapes. Let's make some of those. These are a lot of fun. Let's make some long football shapes. Now you're gonna notice that that line, that dark green line is showing through my yellow ochre. Now I'm painting professional paints, all right? This is a, I think this one is Liquitex. So I'm gonna have to really come with my paint. All right, what is happening here is there's not enough pigment in my brush right now to cover that paint underneath. If you were painting a student paint or an off-brand paint, you might find it nearly impossible to get the yellow to cover over that dark green. Now, if you're, I'm not expecting you to drop everything and go out and drop hundreds of dollars on paint. So if that's what's happening to you, a trick you can do is add a little of your white paint, which often has a bigger pigment load, to your yellow to help it out. And that might make it where you only have to do two coats to get that effect, okay? Don't panic. If it looks like I'm painting something and it just isn't working the same for you, I just don't want you to panic. I'm gonna come make another one of these right here. All right, make another one of them right here. I like them. I might make its sister right here. Break up this pattern. You're like, but you put that blue line in. Aren't you stressed? Now I'm never stressed. Well, I mean, I am stressed. I have three kids, so clearly I'm stressed periodically. It's impossible to have three kids and not find yourself stressed sometimes. All right? That's happening. I'm going to come up here, and I'm going to, between these two, I'm going to add some of this, because I like it. It's a little more green. It's a little more green, but I'm not gonna worry about it. Nice big one right here. It's a nice little shape. I'm gonna come back with some stuff to make these much more interesting architecturally. I don't know if you'll hear the incredible rainstorm going on outside. It's kind of a perfect day to be doing this floral. I find it really relaxing to be painting when it's raining, except that I'm filming and all the power could go out. Cause that would not be as relaxing. <laughs> I feel like I could do one here. Right? I feel like I could do one here. Now a neat little thing I can do is while I've got, I'm going to take a little of this blue over to this yellow, it's fun, get over here, and I'm going to grab a little bit of white. You're like, what? This crazy color. And then I'm going to come back, do you remember these guys? Add a highlight to some of it, not all of it. Not fun. So we're going to find some highlights find some highlights and add some. We don't paint them out. We leave paint 
fine. The paint underneath shows, okay? We're again implying things. Now, here's the really fun one. You might need to wipe your brush off if it's getting lumpy and load it back up to the tip as you can see me doing. And then I'm going to use this brush. If I need to get it right here, hopefully you can see this, I'm making a dash, dash, dash. See what I'm doing? Coming down there. Get more yellow if you need it, if you want to break up that color and that shape. Look, I'm getting some white and some yellow. This is this is where abstract painting seems simple, but it actually it's a it's a thing. Come this side, making those dashes that you saw, and then come right the other side, making this sort of V pattern. And come back up here and get some of that color. See, that's a lot about a it, uh, abstract painting is just being expressive and free-spirited with the color without creating a muddy mess. And let me tell you that's the challenge. That's the challenge. How to be free with the color, tell a clear story that people can feel, resonate, and relate to, and not make a muddy, muddy mess. Look at that. Loving it. Okay. I'm going to rinse off my brush for a second. I'm going to come back and over here to the right hand side, I'm going to pull out a little more blue. I'm going to get my yellow again. Get that sort of turquoise, deep turquoise to the blue. Alright. And I'm going to come back in and very carefully paint back in my front my front reflection line. Grab a little bit of white, trust me on this one. Wipe off your brush, get your deep, just work it right here. May not be the last time you visit this line. So you want a fairly deep tone, but now visually we put the front of the glass in front of the stems. Weird little trick. Take this color, add a little white to it, do something crazy. We're going to come and we're going to take these fabulous leaves that we just made, these architectural leaves, and we're going to outline them. You're like, what? Yeah. Going to outline them. Gonna outline this one. Then I'm gonna draw a line up the center, almost the way a child might draw a leaf, and off one side, right, on the flat, pull, 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 pull. Seems so simple, but that's where these paintings come together. Now when you see these style of paintings on Pinterest, you'll be like, oh, no, my child could not paint that unless they were fully guided by the art sure book. Um, and there's some real artistry there. There's some real design that I need to think about when I'm doing these. Right down the center. I think what alienates people from modern art is the attitude sometimes that the modern art world has of, well, if you were just more educated and you knew better, you would understand it. Here's a little trick. Art shouldn't require you to have an incredible education to relate to it on some level. It's supposed to be a universal language. It's why we took it up as a species in the first place. Um, if I have to have somebody stand there and explain to me for two hours orally why this is art, I'm kind of not into it. I really like a piece that if I'm a stranger to it, I'm a stranger to the origin of its creation. Even if it's out there, I at least have to interact with it and consider it. Like even Coons, who is certainly out there in the modern art world, if you're going to see a giant metallic balloon looking dog just out in the middle of the field, you're going to stop and consider it. You don't need somebody to explain to you what it is. It can be nice to understand the context of why it's created and if you like a piece to find out those things more, 
But if somebody's got to get up in your face to defend it, it's um. Here's my test, my litmus test for art. Put it in the alleyway. If somebody saves it before the trash man shows up, probably was art. Obviously, there are exceptions to that. Obviously, there are exceptions to that. But that's the response I sometimes feel when I'm dealing with that. Well, you know, if they were just more educated, they would understand it. I'm like, make it, make better art, make everyone understand it, be more clear in your communication. You know, there's that fabulous video from the Museum of Modern Art. Of, uh, I'll put the name here because I can't remember it off the top of my head, but this lady and her boyfriend were uh, performance artists. And they broke up by walking the Great Wall of China like years ago, and then she was doing this installation where she was sitting and staring at people. But there's this bit when he comes in and they haven't seen each other in 20 years, and you see this bit of video. See, that doesn't need anyone with a PhD to explain it to you why it's awesome. It just is awesome. It's awesome. It's just awesome. It's awesome for everybody. Everybody universally gets that. Right? Everybody gets it. It may be confrontational. It may be uncomfortable, but we all understand it. Right? I know. Sometimes art has to be confrontational. Sometimes it has to be uncomfortable. See, I'm just going through all my leaves. I'm doing this. And it's lovely to do this on a rainy day. Oh, I like this. Now, I'm coming back on the other side with this other thing. And I'm hoping it's not too symmetrical, but you just have to decide these things. You know, as you're going, you just have to work it out as you're going. It's just one of those little moments of interestingness. Now, we're going to come in and do the water. So I imagine this whole time you've been like having this sort of panic attack about, I don't know, I can't paint glass. You can see through it. How do you paint something you see through? You don't paint something that you see through. You paint the color and the light and the reflections that the see-through object creates. So you're not really painting anything see-through. You're painting exactly what you're seeing. You're painting what you can see. You don't paint what you can't see. You only paint what you can see. Kind of interesting, maybe. I hope so. All right, so what we're going to do for this is I'm going to come first. I'm going to get a little of my purple and a little of my blue together, and maybe my little greens in there. And I'll get a little white out just to, just to sort of feel it out. And I'm going to come maybe between here very carefully between this stem and the stem next to it. Can you see that? I'm coming between these two stems. I'm going to pull this down and I'm painting this darker color between the stems. And along the bottom edge, I am... I did not mean to do that. I'll paint that out in a second. I'm going to come up. I am not worried about being perfect about this. I am worried about brush directionality and leaving the stems intact. Okay. And we are coming between these stems. Like I came back there and added a little bag into this. This is going to be just follow along with me, just have a little faith in me. We're going to get this, we're going to get this in, okay? Maybe a little here. Down and down. Now I'm going to be getting some more, oh, got too much white. Say so grab too much white. Let me get some of this white on the stem. Come under here. Get this reflection. So what I'm really painting is this incredible symphony of reflections. I'm going to come over and get some more from this green area. Get some white. Got this soft, interesting white green that I really like. I'm going to come over to this corner. Paint this in right here. Very carefully around my stem. It's just the challenge. I know it seems simple to do these paintings, and it is but it's about balancing out what's simple and complicated. 
However, as you're working it out, as you're thinking, you might come back and repaint in your stems a little bit, okay? And we are going to add some color to them. Now I'm coming around here, I've got this blue out, I've got this yellow out, I'm making this sort of green turquoise, it's more to the green of the turquoise, I'm getting some white, and I'm coming right here. And this is, it's very important, believe it or not, this act of painting around the stems creates some of this, what is called naive art. What is naive art? Does it mean that you're not smart? That means that you're not overly educated or trained. So sometimes artists that are not trained through a traditional system will solve their problems in a fresh and innovative way. And the way the art world decided to talk about that, to say, all right, this is not someone who's trained in classical painting methods, but they've managed to accomplish the goal in a way that is refined and sophisticated. So they refer to that sometimes as naive art. Now, if you add to that outsider art, these are often artists that are outside of traditional societal norms that are expressing in a naive process their life experience. See, it's just a language so that we can all go to the museum together and talk about what the heck we're seeing and why it's awesome. That's what art language is supposed to be for. It's supposed to help us be able to talk about why something is awesome. It is never ever supposed to make somebody who's in a creative process feel bad about what they're doing. Ever. That is not what any art language is actually for. And when it's used that way, it annoys me so much. Okay, I'm coming and getting a little more blue. A little more white. We're just painting this here. I might bring that blue over here. Now I might wipe my brush and get a little bit back. Oh my goodness. I have these sugar ants and for some reason they love my palette. They just love it, love it, love it. Alright, I'll get some yellow here. I see a little reflection right there. I'm going to add some right there. Maybe there's a little of that there. Come and get just the white. Be real brave with this and get some just white. Okay, see how I'm doing that right there? I'm adding just a little bit of this white right here. Okay, and we're telling now the story of this glass bowl. Not by trying to paint a hyper-realism version of this glass bowl, but by to tell the reflections and the light story of the bowl. Now I'm going to get wipe my brush off because I want very light color for the top. I'm going to come over here paint in very carefully over here at this point. Maybe I'll grab a little bit of yellow because I'm just being kind of crazy over here. And you know we're going to make some colors up top that you may find that you want. Look I went and grabbed some ochre and back into the white you may want. I'm going to put some right there. I'm going to put a little bit right there. I'm going to wipe off my brush where I got that color. I'm going to get back into my blue and white. Because the primary part of this, this vase here is blue and white. Sometimes my brush strokes will be horizontal and sometimes they will be vertical. And I do that where it serves me in my story a little more blue because I need a little more blue in the tone. But above the line will be much lighter. Now remember you can go back in and paint your stems and we're going to come back in and refine our stems with some crazy colors which again makes this a really special painting. Okay that's what we're doing. Get some light there. Come along this edge. All right, now that I've got that in, I might go back and get some dark color and just make a little couple spots where. And the trip is you're just like, oh my gosh, I had no idea. Thinking all the wrong things about painting glass, I had no idea. None at all. And now you know.
And now, you know, I'm coming here very light, and here I'm going to be very dry brushy with my color because a lot of the background will shine through the glass and impact what you see in front of it. So I'm painting around objects very carefully. Painting around objects very carefully. I'm enjoying this process. It's a really nice piece to get to do today. Yeah. You can go buy these when you're done by the Facebook page. Oh, I always forget to say it. Hopefully you've hung in with me this long and you've clicked, commented, liked, and subscribed. That's always nice to do. Please click, comment, like, and subscribe. It helps me out. Sharing with your friends helps me out. It does. Yes, you can sell your paintings to your family members or locally. It's fine. Don't mind. Okay. I'm proud of you actually when you guys sell stuff. It's pretty cool. Alright, see that? How is it that easy? Uh, yet it is. Okay? And we might come back and we might be like, hey, you know what? I want a little purple and white reflection in here somewhere. Let's put one here between these two stems and maybe some here and a little bit here. But you just try to be kind of not crazy about it, kind of not insane about it. That's really the goal. All right, all right, all right. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take some of this little blue and some of this little purple. We've got going up here that I like so much. Get a little white. Get a little white. All right. And we're going we're gonna to adorn our little stems coming off here with a very similar stroke that you will have already learned up top with the green leaves. These textures and patterns repeating creates a graphic interest in our painting. And it's fun. See? Just dabbing along. Dabbing, dabbing, dabbing along. We'll come back with some white. And you can even go right over the stem or not. As you can see I have done. Up close and really see that. Fun stuff. It's a fun one to do. It is a fun one to do. This is a very good gift painting. This is a really good decorate your house painting. If you're brave, do this one 16 by 20 and then go buy a big gallery wrap canvas like 4860 and do it. And you'll, your friends will be like, what? All right, now I'm going to get some just blue and white, okay? And I'm very loosely, I want you to see this, I'm very loosely making some on the flat strokes coming up here. See that? I might come in and put some more grass because I want to take all that out. But sometimes you just gotta, you just sort of look and go, what do I need where? And then you do it and then you're like, oh, I need to put something else in up there. And I'm putting some more of these flat marks coming up. Flat marks coming up. Maybe another darker one between these two. All right, comes there. Rinse your brush. If you need more green grass, like I just painted mine out, and that's a that's a thing in painting. Like you'll be painting, and you're like, oh, I really need need to take that out. I still need those visually here. So one, two, maybe one down here. See, kept them. Keep them. Now, oh. This is fun. All right, rinse, 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 rinse. This is fairly dry. We get to put in some cabbage roses, which is really great. So I'm going to take this purple over to this cab right here, and I'm going to make a very dark color. Okay. And I'm going to make a circle over here. See me painting that? A circle over here. I let some of the canvas underneath shine through. Okay. Nice little circle over here. I'm going to get one that's more purple than red. I'm going to put it up here. Okay. 
more red than purple down here, maybe facing downward. And I'm just making an ellipse and building around it. I am not painting a rose the way you might normally think, or maybe these are peonies, these could be ranunculus. I'm just not painting the flower the way you might normally think of painting that flower, right? Just doing it differently. And while it's still wet, I'm going to get some white and some yellow and some red, and I'm not going to mix them particularly well. And I'm going to come on this right side, and I'm going to very carefully shrink some color just this right side, even here, on the right side. I'm not blending it, I'm letting it be streaking crazy. Welcome to. Uh, abstract painting streaky and crazy all right you guys are learning a lot about how you can get this stuff in how you can save flowers without saying flowers it's very interesting how one can do that okay now come get just your red so it'll be a very powerful statement come aside and stroke just the red, but don't do even strokes. See how I break up those strokes? Let me up here, I'm just breaking up strokes. Like it's no big deal. Like it's no big deal. All right, so I've done that. All right, come get some just white. Just white and come on this side of this one. Oh, that's nice. I like those. So sometimes I like uh, stuff that's a little clumpier, so I'm going to create a clump. So I'm going to come here and get a little red. I'm going to get a little yellow. Red, little yellow. And I'm going to make a little shape that fills out this space here and some of this space. We're going to, and some of this space. We're going to start out, and I'm going to, in that dashing brush stroke, Say, hey guys, there's this interesting sort of pop of flower coming out. And I'm going to let it be more of a cone shape. It's going to come out here. I'm going to get some more of this color. Okay. I'm going to come up through here. We're being very careful to not drill down the story of what flower in this particular case we're talking about because what we want is to tell the story of that moment, of that special moment where the light hit the flower and looked a particular way. So I'm just sort of loosely filling in those spaces, being very, very loose about it. While I've got this color pulled out, this sort of orange that I've made, I'm going to get a little white and make this incredible peach. And I'm going to come on the other side of my leaves with this peach. Look at me go crazy! Crazy! Yeah, if you don't like crazy, this is not your art channel. <laughs> If you don't like singing, and I'm not drinking my coffee today, which is like so weird, but I am enjoying it. I'm enjoying my new mug a lot. I am enjoying it. Back up. We're just whipping through this. Look at that. Just totally easy to do. Doesn't that look really good? Now what I'd like you to do, let's add your brush a little bit. We're going to get a little of our yellow into our blue and create a very bright grass green. A little bit of our white. I'm going to come here and I'm going to, oh, not quite so yellow, I need a little more green in that. Come in here and break up some of this space in here. Yeah, we'll be putting other little flowers there. I don't want it to be so dark that I can't see anything from it. 
So we're just making sure that that is not a uniform color. See, this is just turning into a gorgeous little abstract. And then, you know, we're going to be looking for like, what could we have here? And we'll put something in here. I'm thinking about that right now. While I'm thinking about that, come and get some white. Right, just some white. Come along and add some dabs of white. To these lovely pieces here. And a bunch to this piece here. Want a little bit of white there. Breaks up that. Not a lot. Do it lightly. Dust it. Treat it like cayenne pepper. You're just working that out. Now I've got my white. I'm going to come get some just yellow. My white. Just on the right side of these rows, I'm going to add another little dusting of this. I feel like we need something like right here, something kind of fun. So I'm going to get my purple. I'm going to put something right there. It's going to be purple. It's going to be just deep purple. And I'm going to do a very similar brush stroke to what I did right there. Add just this little, it's almost like a cone of purple. cone of purple coming off here. Just a little cone of this dark purple because that's sort of nice, isn't it? Now I'm going to come and add the highlight to these. Let's get some white. Get this peach, get this white going here. Maybe a little yellow. I'm going to add just a t overlay, just a dusting of that color into these because I just want some more color. Get some yellow, get some white. Create the layers. A little bit there, a little there, there. Just look for places that it needs balance. Right. And one thing that you can do right now is you can create some like little petals that have fallen down there. Look for maybe a little reflection. Add a little in the glass of some of the colors that you have up here in the glass because the glass will reflect and... It's done. Oh my goodness, this was just too much fun. This is devotion. This is dedicated to you guys. Come by the Facebook page. Make This painting was voted on. I try to do designs. Now, yes, sometimes I hitch, I like hijack you guys. And we do some weird geeky thing in Dorkington that I just have to do because emotionally I just have to do it. But mostly designs go up there. You guys tell me yes, you guys tell me no. If it gets enough likes, it becomes a tutorial. If you like it, share it, invite your friends over, paint it together, do it on paint night, have a really good time. This week, look for beauty just everywhere you are. No matter, no matter I don't care if you're outside of Walmart, look for plantings, look for spring. Look for spring, get inspiration, start thinking about doing florals in this exciting, all right, I'm going to see you at the easel really soon. You guys have a really beautiful week. I love you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.